welcome to Soulful Sunday here at Ariel's Corner. This is Ariel Gatoga, and we are streaming live on YouTube and on Twitch. Thank you so much for being here today. I so appreciate you. Moderating today on YouTube are the lovely Shirley and the lovely Honey Paw, and moderating on Twitch is the lovely Dre. Thank you so much, moderators. I'm so grateful to all of you moderators and to all of you that are here with us today. We'll get going in just a moment. I don't have any premiere today. I was going to do one, but I've got um, a big work day ahead of me. So I thought, well, let's not pile myself too full of things. <laughs> so maybe I'll have something tomorrow. <laughs> we have had a, a, quite a few uh, premieres lately. I've been trying to make up for the, the lack of them uh, while I was on vacation. Uh, let's see. If you are new here, we are here every day except for Monday. And on Tuesday, we don't have a regular magic stream. We have a tarot class. It's usually very brief, and that's at 9.45 a.m. Pacific. And then Wednesday through Sunday, we are here at 10.15 a.m. Pacific for some some sort of magic stream. Wednesday is a, usually a practical magic, a spell of some sort. Thursday is uh, usually magic in theory, and that's usually where we're going over some sort of course or class. Right now, we are... Uh, covering a witch's primer, which is our basic witchcraft training. Friday, we work a witch's rosary, and once a month on Fridays, we also work the Shekinah Square, which is uh, talked about in the basic angel magic course. Saturday, we have a psalm spell, and then here on Sunday, we have a live stream lecture, which can be all kinds of stuff. Um, usually, it's inspirational in nature. Sometimes, it's more educational. We have um, we have streams on each of the, sorry, we have chat threads open on each of these streams. So please chat amongst yourselves. And if you have a question for me, you can put it right in the chat thread and I will do my best to get to it before the end of the stream. Like I said, I do have to get right to work. So if I'm going late, I may not be able to take a bunch of questions, but we'll, I'll do my very, very best. We have a shop at arielscornershop.com, arielscornershop.com, and it has been, and it continues to be, a bunch of affiliate links, which is a way for us to make a small commission off of sales, and it's just a, a way that we can um, generate some income for the channel, because we don't charge for anything at Ariel's Corner, everything's free. However, we are upgrading that shop into a full retail experience, so we will let you know as soon as we have a, a soft launch available for that. Another way to support our channel is with a donation, and you can donate by going to paypal.me slash arielgatoga, paypal.me slash arielgatoga. If you're on YouTube, you could also use a super sticker, super chat, or super thanks if you feel like giving us a donation and staying on the platform. Uh, we have a lot of stuff on our, our website. That's usually where you can go and get pretty much anything you want that we, we offer, including our free courses, free booklets, free lectures, free guided meditations, etc. And that is available at ariels-corner.com or just arielscorner.com. Both will work just fine. Uh, at the bottom of every page, on our website at arielscorner.com, you will find links to all social media. And included in those links to social media are a free Facebook, uh, sorry, a private Facebook group and our Discord server. And that's where you can go if you want to be part of the community, chat amongst each other, with each other, ask questions, give support, get support, all of that stuff. So we hope to see you in one of our communities. All right, so thank you so much for being here, and we will get going right now with our talk. If you are in a place where it is appropriate and safe for you, please close your eyes and begin to take some nice, long, slow, deep, relaxing breaths in through your nose and out through your mouth. With every inhale, feel more light and peace entering your body and mind. With every exhale, feel like you're able to let go of all tension from your body, along with anything from your mind that you do not want, inhaling peace and exhaling as you let go. 
we picture ourselves on top of a beautiful mountain in the center of a circular grove of trees. In the center of this grove, a bonfire blazes forth, lighting us and the grove with a sacred golden light. We recognize that this is the light of perfect love and perfect trust, and it easily and gently burns away everything unlike itself, leaving us safe and serene. Into this sacred space, we also invoke the presence of our Creator. To some of us, our Creator reveals themselves to be a mother and father, a goddess and God. We also call upon our angels, our guides, our teachers. We ask that we be guided as we walk upon the way, becoming happier, more peaceful, more powerful, more magical, and more loving people. Thank you very much. Blessed be. We are going to talk about the psalmic initiatory path today, and we are going to emphasize specifically cursing as part of that path. So to begin with, for those of you who don't work psalm magic, we want to get you kind of up to speed. (laughs) So for us, the book of Psalms is its own book. It's separate and distinct from the rest of the Bible. And you can obviously read the rest of the Bible because it helps to give context, but it's not necessary in order to work psalm magic. The only thing you need to work psalm magic is the book of Psalms. So you can read that book of Psalms as a book, as part of the Bible. You can read it just online. It doesn't matter where you get your Psalms. And it really doesn't matter which translation you use. I prefer the authorized King James Version because that's the way I learned them. And that's usually what I use when I work my own Psalm magic, but whatever works for you is fine. The The translations that I don't really recommend are the ones that are the plain English ones, There's a lot of the translations of the Bible that have been translated in such a way that it seems to make it easier for people to understand because it's in modern plain English, but in making them in modern plain English, many times those translators have omitted very important symbols. And the symbols in the Psalms are everything for us because they don't necessarily always mean for us what they say on the surface, because psalm magic has to do with digging for magic seeds, and those magic seeds exist behind the psalm's obvious meaning sometimes. Sometimes it is very obvious, but not always. So I would use one of the main translations, the, the, um, the scholarly translations that are in use in the, in the main religions of our time. And for me, the authorized King James Version is my favorite, not only because I trust the translation for the most part, but I also really love the the Shakespearean language. To me, those incantations are very magical. Now, of course, it also is helpful for you to read the Psalms in Hebrew. And if you don't understand Hebrew, you can find side-by-side translations. And it's, it's interesting to read through the psalm side-by-side from Hebrew and see exactly what each word translates into. Uh, it's challenging for you to use the side-by-side translation as an incantation, but for study, it's very helpful for finding, for finding some of those meanings. It's not necessary, though. You can just work with a standard translation, and that's absolutely fine. All right, so the basic psalmic formula, for those of you who aren't familiar with it, is very straightforward. You take the psalm that you're working, and you speak it out loud once, all the way through without stopping, and we call that an incantation. Then you go back through it, and you consider each one of those verses that you just spoke, and you try to find what it means for you. And I, to me, it's sort of like a tarot reading. It changes every time. Every time I, I take a Psalm, it depends on what, what the situation is, because for us, Psalm magic is very practical. So if I'm bringing Psalm 23 to a problem, or I should say, if I'm bringing, if I'm bringing a problem to say Psalm 23, I've 
read Psalm 23 hundreds and hundreds of times by now in my life, but it will mean something very different when it's applied to that particular problem sometimes. So I keep my mind open and I look for what those symbols are telling me and I let it be something that's living, a living, breathing experience for myself. And what that does is it rearranges the thought forms in my mind that are there in regards to whatever the situation is. So it either destroys some thoughts that are causing a problem and or creates new thought forms that will help to bring about a specific goal. So they're very magical, these th- these psalms, and that's why magicians have been using them for so long. And it always makes me laugh how it bothers everybody <laughs> when we talk about psalms. <laughs> it's gotten a little bit better nowadays, but back in the day when I would talk about psalm magic, um, it would anger the witches, it would anger the Christians, it would anger the Jews, it would anger everybody. Everybody would get so mad that we were using psalms for magic. And if you look in the in the history of magic, psalms have been around since magic, since, you know, in the Western esoteric occult tradition, all of the, all of the great grimoires include psalms. You know, and it's not only in, in uh, Western European magical traditions. There, the Psalms are there in traditional witchcraft very, very deeply. They are there in hoodoo. They are there in voodoo. They are there in a lot of different magical paths. So it's, it just cracks me up to, to see how um, they've been so prevalent in magical traditions for so long, yet it's a shock to people that we, <laughs> we use psalms. <laughs> anyway, so now on onto the psalmic initiatory path. So that's just how we, so anybody can just take a, a psalm. You can be a lay person. You don't have to be a, a trained magician. Anybody can take a psalm and work the psalm formula and get results. They're there for everybody. But if you're looking to an initiatory path to an actual to actually walking a magical path we've talked about the psalmic initiatory path before so i won't go too far into it but the the idea is that when you take the book of psalms as it stands now 150 psalms including all of the the in uh, psalm 119 is really 22 psalms you know, but so you can you can work Psalm 119 as a single psalm, or you can work it as 22 separate psalms, and that's up to you. But when you take all those psalms, you can commit to working that magical formula, that psalmic formula, those two steps that we just talked about: the invocation and the and the um, the planting of magical seeds for each of those psalms, 150 psalms. When you get through all the book, that's considered one degree on the path, one degree of initiation. Now, I've got probably another couple lectures that go a lot more deeply into that path of psalmic initiation. So if you're interested in that, I would recommend that you listen to those. And I think I also have a blog post on it somewhere on my blog. But... Just suffice it to say that if you're walking the psalmic initiatory path, you are going to be going through each and every psalm. There's a a practical benefit for psalmic initiates, and that is this. Well, there's there's a couple of practical benefits for psalmic initiates or people that are walking on the path of initiation. One is that you don't have to be as concerned with, am I getting the right psalm? Because it's true for everybody that any psalm can work for any purpose, but it's also true that some psalms tend to get you there faster than others. However, when you're walking the psalmic initiatory path, you're going to get to each psalm anyway. So you're working a larger magical operation throughout the entire year if you're working with psalms regularly. So it really doesn't matter what which psalm you get uh, as much. That's 
that's one benefit. Now, another thing that comes into play if you're walking the psalmic initiatory path is that you are going to encounter psalmic curses that you have to go through in order to to get your degree. You have to do all 150. If you're not walking the path of initiation, you don't ever have to do a psalmic curse if you don't want to. You can just pick and choose which ones you want to work. But if you're walking that path, you are required to curse. It's not an option for you. And this is what's so different when you're working psalms as a magician or a witch versus as a, uh, a religious person, say a Christian. They don't have to work the psalms that they don't want to. They can do whatever they want. A lot of them make excuses for the curses. They, 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 <laughs> they tie themselves up in all kinds of knots about what the imprecatory psalms are there for and how they might have been used and make all kinds of excuses for them. We don't. We do not make excuses for the psalmic curses. We use them as what they are, curses. And when you're working a psalmic curse, you can, and we do very frequently, use them sometimes on the thought forms in our own psyche to break them up as sort of like banishing spells. So if we have, you know, debts or poverty or or health problems, those sorts of things, we can curse those things. We can curse those things. And so that's very frequently where many psalm magicians will focus their psalmic cursing is on conditions. But you don't need to. You can, you can curse people. You can curse people. It's totally legal for you to curse people. And the reason is this. For, for a psalmic curse, a psalmic curse is there in a way that other kinds of curses aren't. They are there with a lot of protection. And I want to just go through this very briefly. In, I think it's Psalm, I think it's Psalm 69. I, I always forget which Psalm it is. I think it's Psalm 69. It actually talks about Satan. It actually b- brings up the, the, the word Satan as an entity. And it asks infinite intelligence, it asks God to sick Satan on our enemy. Let's look at who Satan is in, in, in the context of psalmic magic. Satan works for God. Satan is not an antichrist. Satan is not an adversary of God. Satan is an adversary for God in the Psalms. The modern equivalent might be something like a district attorney or a state attorney or something like that, where they're going after criminals on behalf of the state or on behalf of the government. So Satan is not a person like John Smith. Satan is more of a title. So Satan would be the, uh, like you would say, Mr. District Attorney, or if you were talking to a judge, you would say Your Honor or Judge. Or if you're talking to a chef, you, you, you'd call them chef. Yes, chef, no chef. Or a doctor, yes, doctor, no doctor. So yes, Satan, no Satan is, in, is talking about the office from this perspective. Now, I'm not saying this is true for Satanists but, and, and, and other people that work with that, that word. Just within the context of psalmic magic, that's what it is. So, basically, what, what that means is that if you're going to be cursing another person, you are basically pressing charges. You're pressing charges against that person. Now, whether or not infinite intelligence follows through with those charges is not something that you get to decide. Just like you don't get to decide if you press charges with somebody in the in a in a mortal court. It it may work out and it may not. But that's that's your right. You have that right to do that. And therefore, while you're working your psalm magic every 
every year or whatever you're doing, you know, going through all 150 psalms, when you come up against a psalmic curse, you're more than welcome to press charges against somebody if you think that that is necessary. Now, frequently what we do in psalm magic is we bundle the psalms. We have psalm collections. So we'll do maybe a prosperity bundle. We'll, we'll work you know, a certain set of prosperity psalms for a certain amount of days. Or we'll work a curse and we'll take, you know, 10 curses and we'll take 10 days and one curse a day and we'll, and we'll you know, really work the curse on, on a situation or on a person. And that sort of like takes care of those 10 psalms for you. So you can check all those off your, off your list. And so when, if you're going to be going through a psalmic curse once a year as you're going through this this initiation, you may as well make it count. So if you have a big situation in your life, you can use it on a big situation. You don't have to use it on a person. But if you don't have a big situation in your life and you do, it's time for that curse. You you got to do that curse. And you if you you've decided I want to do a big whopping ten day curse. I'm going to use ten psalms, and this is how it's going to go. Well, what are you going to do it on? It doesn't have to necessarily be somebody that's done something to you personally. You can press charges against somebody at somebody that's uh, that's really wronged a friend of yours or a loved one of yours. There's no limit to that. Nobody can tell you no to that. Because you're protected. You're not just you're not just cursing willy nilly. You're doing a psalmic curse. And like I said, you're pressing charges against somebody. And if those people are innocent, it won't do a thing to them, nor will it return back on you. Because you're just exercising your right as a psalm magician. So if you're off base and it and, and they don't deserve anything, it's not gonna hurt anybody, including you. It's a, there's built in safety in psalmic cursing. But if the that person really did do something wrong, it's not like that they're not gonna get what's coming to them anyway without you. But for some reason or another, when we work psalmic curses on somebody, it does seem to speed that up for one reason or another. And I don't really fully understand it, but it really does work. So if you're going to be walking the psalmic initiatory path, recognize that within that you're going to have to be doing some cursing. And so you may as well, if you're going to have to curse anyway, make it count. Don't waste your curse on, you know, something that's not all that important. Take those 10 Psalms in that collection on, on, like on my website. And there's more curses than just those 10. There's tons of them. But if you're going to take those 10 curses and, and put them together as a single curse, make it count. Make it count. Make it, make sure that you're working on something that's really important to you, whether it be a situation, a condition, a habit, or yes, a person. And it's one of the few places in my practice where I don't really caution against it. Because if you're walking the psalmic initiatory path, usually by the time you get, it's time to curse somebody, you've gotten your mind together to the point where you're probably right. They probably do deserve it. You're probably right. If you're using this psalm on a person and you've been on this path of initiation, your curse is probably coming from wisdom, not from reaction, not from ego. And in this regard, cursing is something that helps to bring about balance, that helps to bring about uh, aid and assistance. And a lot of times it's hard for us as good people to think, well, how is cursing ever positive? Well, how is pressing charges positive? If somebody's, if somebody's stealing from you or stealing from your, you know, from, from your business, if somebody's absconded with a bunch of money, 
you don't just say, well, I don't want to hurt them. I'm not going to press charges. Poor thing. They just needed the money. No, you don't do that. If somebody's, if somebody has vandalized your house and you know who they are, you don't just say, oh, well, they were just having a bad day. No, you press charges. So the same thing goes with psalmic curses. If somebody really is acting badly, we have remedy for that. <laughs> and so use it. Use it. Don't shy away from these curses because they are there for your benefit. And when people come against, uh, come up with those psalm, uh, are confronted with those psalmic curses, uh, very frequently, like I said, in in many religions, they make a lot of excuses for them, and they they make them real flowery, and they you know, oh, you know, back in the day, yeah, but we don't do that. Not us. No, they are what they are. They are what they are. They are curses, and they are there to be used for our benefit in order for us to stay safe, in order for us to clean up problems in our lives, in order for us to continue growing spiritually. That's part of life. It's part of life. In this world, unfortunately, we have awful people. We have awful situations. We have wars. We have violence. We have sexual predators. We have... Uh, thieves. We have terrorists. We have all kinds of horrible, evil people. So we, when, when we are cursing, we are, we are claiming our right to be safe. We are claiming our right to have order in our lives. We are claiming our right to be protected from those kinds of problems. And believe me, when you are good at this and somebody crosses you and you curse them, they don't tend to do it again. They tend to know they messed with the wrong person. Right? And so by using, by using these psalmic curses very judiciously and, and understanding how powerful they are and not misusing them, not, not turning, turning it into, well, I'm just going to only do the psalmic curses. No, you, you reserve it for when you need it. But you got to go through them as part of your psalmic initiation anyway. So my recommendation and what I do is I tend to group them together, at least those 10, and I'll use those 10 together for 10 days, probably about once a year, on something that needs it. And I, I don't take it lightly, but at the same time, I don't not use it because I got to use it. Now, frequently, I don't need to use it on people. Frequently, I can use it on stuff in my own deep mind that needs some help. But there's lots of psalms that can undo negative thought forms in my mind. There's lots of psalms that do that, that aren't necessarily cursing psalms. So there's people out there that, that are, are um, not good for our society. Their behavior is not good for our society. Their behavior is not good for our relationships with one another. Their behavior is unacceptable. And if they get to a certain point where I think, well, maybe I can curse them. It's kind of too bad for them, right? Because they're going to know that they don't ever want to do that again, whatever it is they did, because these Psalms aren't kidding. These curses are not kidding. And like I said, if for some reason you get it wrong, you're protected. Nobody will get hurt. No, it's not like you're just going to go out and attack somebody. It's not like a psychic attack. This is, again, pressing charges through a particular kind of chain of command. And if you press charges and somebody doesn't deserve it, you're not going to get you know, in trouble for that. Now, if you abuse the system, you might get your hand slapped. But most, most people walking the psalmic path aren't doing that. But like I said, as you walk this path, you get more astute. You get wiser. You get meeker. You get more peaceful. You get kinder. 
And so usually if it's time for a psalmic curse and it comes up for you that this is the place where this curse needs to be cast, you're probably right. You're probably right. And then you are co-creating with infinite intelligence on another level where you're undoing problems in the world. You're not, necess- you're not being a vigilante. You're not doing it all by yourself, but you're co-creating. You're working with the infinite in order to solve a problem. So, psalmic curses are a very important part of working psalm magic. It's not something that we make excuses for. It's not something that we shy away from. And it's not something that we abuse either. But we do use them. And my recommended way of working with them is taking those main 10 that I work with and, and working a, a psalmic curse on it. And then that takes those 10 out of, out of play for the rest of the year for me because I have all those other psalms I have to go through, right? So, and then there's other, there's other curses. <clears throat> now, in my uh, website, I do have those psalmic curses. Now, I gave you originally the curses as they were given to me, and I've kind of, I've revamped it a little bit. Uh, I used to have it, I've taken out Psalm 7 and I've replaced it with Psalm 5 because I think Psalm 5 is a stronger curse than Psalm 7. But you don't. You can use 7 if you like it instead of Psalm 5. But the, the curses in that particular collection are 5, 35, 55, 58, 59, 69, 79, 109, 137, and 139. So you can do all of those Psalms, one a day for 10 straight days. Until you, and then if you don't get a feeling that it's, that it's happened, then you can do another round. And then you can, you can do as many rounds as you need to until you get the sense that it's, it's taken care of, whatever it is that you're doing. But then you basically, you can take those out of play for the rest of your psalmic initiatory year because 150 psalms is a lot of psalms. So you've got a lot of other ones that you're going to be working with. But choose wisely and don't waste a good curse. <laughs> so that's my little two cents on working the psalmic curses as an as an initiate. They're there for your benefit, and they're there to be worked in very specific ways. And you can work them on thought forms, you can work them on conditions, and you can also work them on people. And that's completely up to you, and it's between you and infinite intelligence. And one more thing about Satan in the psalm curses in the psalmic path, we don't work directly with Satan. That's not, that's not our thing. You don't call up the DA and say, hi, you know, I just thought you'd like to know and I'd like to press charge. No, you, you, do, it, you, you do it through a particular way. And in, this, in the way it is in the, in the psalms is you're working directly with infinite intelligence and infinite intelligence deals with the, the, the nuts and bolts of it, including that character that is described in the psalms as Satan. So when you're working psalms, you're personally not sicking Satan on somebody. You're not calling up that prosecutor and say, you do this. You're calling up infinite intelligence and asking infinite intelligence, could you send Satan, please? <laughs> so that's how that works in this particular path. All right. So work with the the initiatory path as your own path of initiation, but don't don't think that the psalmic curses are something to sort of gloss over or apologize for or to make excuses for. They're there to be used as what they are. And not only can you use them, but you must use them. It's required that you curse. Each one of those cursing psalms must be used at least once as part of your initiation each degree. So, some it's, an, it's one way to look at that and one way to think about that. Well, I think that does it for my little talk on psalmic curses as they relate to the psalmic initiatory path. I hope that was interesting for you, and I will talk to you soon. Thanks so much for listening. Until next time, blessed be. If we have any questions, ooh, we do. 
Are the Psalms capable of performing any special miracles? Well, yes. <laughs> yes, that's the whole point. <laughs> Each time that you work a Psalm, there should be some miracles happening, or we call it magic. Uh, magic and miracles have a slightly different meaning. Miracles are things that happen that are magical in a way that you might not have understood, whereas magic tends to be uh, you trying to create a specific result. But high magic and miracles pretty much mean the same thing. So yeah, the, all, of, all of Psalm magic does that. Has anyone experienced resistance when you do purification Psalms? I have. I have. Because we want to hang on to our stuff. That's the ego. The ego does not want to give up that stuff. So absolutely, when I do purification Psalms, it's like, ugh. It's like fasting. Nobody likes to fast, but you're glad you did it because right, it's very cleansing. Uh, there's a lot of those kinds of things that nobody likes to do. Nobody likes to exercise. Nobody. I mean, I know some people say they love going to yoga class. I like having gone to yoga class. I can't stand going to yoga class, but I like having gone. I like how it feels afterwards. Same thing with the purification psalms. I don't love it. I don't love it, but I like how it makes me feel. The, cur- the cursing is supposed to help us release and to be able to forgive. Yes. Yes, cursing to forgive is definitely our ultimate goal because we want to be at peace. But we don't we we can't be at peace if we're not able to exercise our rights as as spiritual beings that are living in this world. And if there's if there's horrible behavior, the first part the first step in forgiveness is no. <laughs> you can't do that, right? So yeah, but eventually the whole the whole goal is to forgive. But you don't forgive in a way that is um, giving um, permission to bad for bad behavior. So the cursing is to stop the bad behavior, and then the the forgiveness comes after that. For me, are the Psalms in the King James version in the purest origin, or is there another original source book? Just the, if you look in the any of the Hebrew. Bibles. That's the that's the source of the the book of Psalms. So, but the King James is a very very brilliantly um. Whew, how do I want to say it? It's very consistent in how it's um and how it it has been translated, and so it works very well for English speaking people, because just understanding the source material doesn't understand the context or the syntax and the people that 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 um worked on the King James version were extremely meticulous about taking that syntax and keeping it from the Jewish syntax or the Hebrew syntax and making it understandable in an English perspective from an English perspective whereas just going word for word in the Bible doesn't do that because unless you are very clear on what the idioms meant and why they were the way they were and why they said the things that they said, you'll just say, oh, okay, this means that. And you won't get why it means that. So it's important not only that you get the source material translated, but you get it translated in a way that it keeps the meaning intact. So that's why I like it. Uh, I remember you saying that there are certain spells that can speed up your intentions, like Psalms 150. Yeah, anytime you, anytime you can get into praise, then you speed things up and you expand things very quickly. So any of the praise-oriented Psalms will speed up your results. And 150 is very praisey. <laughs> so yeah, absolutely. Do you consider psalmic magic to be an easier and more effective than yoga practice? Well, I don't know about that. I mean, uh, I I don't know. It dep- I, yoga practice is such a broad term. It's just that that uh, that's kind of almost meaningless. Uh, it, what do you? It just depends on what you mean by yoga and what branch of yoga you're talking about. Yoga is this means the same thing as the word religion. Yoga means to yoke. Religion means to bind to bind back. So they're both meaning the same sort of thing. They, they, each thing is a, is a spiritual path, is a, is a system. Now, there's a lot of different t- 
types of yoga and not all of it involves things like exercise. So hatha yoga is one one branch of yoga, one type of yoga, but not all all of those yogic paths even include that or have those asanas mean the same things. So and and a lot of that is part of a a very specific um culture you know that that's very different than our culture here in the states or in in western europe but uh and then the psalms are a system of magic that has been developed based on that judeo christian um mindset which is prevalent in the west even for people that have no um that that, that, that don't practice a, a, a judeo-christian religion it's still prevalent in the zeitgeist of the mind so that's one of the reasons why it's such a powerful practice even if you're not either christian or Jew, jewish or or have any you know desire to be part of those religious paths they still seem to affect the western mind very very deeply whereas yoga doesn't always affect the the western mind in the same way as it as it does um with people that have that as part of their their group mind part of the you know that have a the hindu religion as part of their their group mind so anything is helpful if it's used in a way that's that's um wise so there's a there's a lot of benefit to studying yoga as well as there's a lot of benefit to working the psalms and n- neither are necessary for your for your spiritual growth you don't have to work psalms you don't have to do yoga you don't have to do magic you don't have to ever read a holy book you you can have um all kinds of spiritual experiences and grow spiritually without ever walking a psalmic path or a yoga path or a magical path or a religious path so anything can work it's just if you're going to work a path it's helpful to work it in a non-superstitious way and that's usually what most high magicians try to do aim to do and that's to not look at things superstitiously or religiously necessarily but to see how um, we can look at it more scientifically to get the results that we're looking for. All right. Well, those were really good questions. I so appreciate those, and I hope I was helpful. And I adore you, and thank you so much to the amazing moderators. Today, oh, I just closed my window here. Sorry. Today, our wonderful moderators were on YouTube, Shirley and Honeypot, and on Twitch, Ray. So thanks so much for a great day and we'll see everybody hopefully at tarot class on Tuesday. Until next time, blessed be.